Hey everyone! So today I'm going to show you step by step how to animate Hollow Knight like characters from start to finish. That includes creating a character, animating it, and exporting it properly. I'll put timestamps in the description if you'd like to skip ahead. We'll be using Photoshop and Unity, just like Team Cherry did. Before we start, I want to quickly note that taking inspiration from a game like Hollow Knight might seem intimidating, but if you look closely, some of their animations are simple and beginner friendly. As someone who loves making games, I found art and animation to be my biggest hurdle. So if you're like me, I'm hoping this video will help you get started. I'm also hoping you find it's easier than you thought. So with that said, let's jump right in. To start, let's open up a new Photoshop project. Name the project whatever you like. Choose a width of 300 pixels and a height of 500 pixels. Also change the resolution to 300. Keep in mind, these are settings I'm using for my project. You should change this to fit your project's needs. But if you're unsure, just follow along with me. This is a good size for a standard 4K resolution project. First, I'm going to set everything up. We'll start by unlocking the background layer by clicking the unlock icon in the layer panel. Next, we'll click the color fill icon in the bottom right corner. Select solid color and choose a color that is similar to a background in your game. Delete the old background layer and let's create a new layer to work on with Control or Command Shift N. So, now that we have our workspace set up, let's start drawing our character. So I do all of my drawing with the pen tool. I would recommend doing it this way too, especially for animating later. If you're brand new to this tool, maybe check out a pen tool tutorial, but I'll cover what you need to know so you should be able to follow along. First, let's zoom in a bit by holding Alt and scrolling on the mouse wheel. With the pen tool selected, Left clicking once will drop a point, clicking again will connect the points. By holding and dragging, you can make a curve. Control or command is a shortcut to the select tool, which will allow you to adjust the handles of your curves. The pen tool creates a path in the path panel next to layers. Let's rename our path to head. So with that, follow along with me and we'll outline a head for our character. So I sped this up a bit and I also went quickly for the sake of this tutorial, but when you do this, take as much time as you need. Okay, so I'm happy with this. Now we're going to color in the outline. Press B to select the brush tool and make sure you have a brush selected with 100% hardness. Change the size to 6 pixels or to an outline size you prefer. Now, let's choose black with the color picker in the top right. We'll press P to go back to our pen tool. And with layer 1 selected, let's right click our path and click stroke path. We'll press escape to deselect our path. And let's rename our layer to head outline. Our next step is to add color in the head. First, let's make a new layer and call it Head Color. Make sure the color layer is directly beneath the outline layer. Now, with the outline layer selected, let's grab the Magic Wand tool. With the Magic Wand tool selected, let's click inside of the head. Here, we would normally grab the paint bucket tool and fill our selection, however, we get a halo effect from Photoshop's anti-aliasing. To solve this, we can head to select, then modify, and expand by 2 pixels. I 
I would also recommend keybinding expand to F5 or whatever is comfortable for you. Just press your keybind before you bucket fill. So just to recap, for coloring, select the outline layer, use the magic wand tool to make a selection. Choose your color layer, grab the bucket tool, choose a color, press your expand hotkey, and click to color fill. If you've made it this far, you've done the hardest part. What's left is just repeating this process for the rest of the character. I'll speed this part up for you, but I'm going to do hair, I'll give him a jacket, and some arms and legs. I could have left this out, but I really wanted to show you that the rest really is just the same process. Also, it might seem like extra work to draw everything on separate layers, but trust me, it's way easier to do it this way. You'll see once we get animating. One quick note as well, if you want to be extra organized with your layers, you can group them. To do this, control click multiple layers, right click and select group from layers. For example, I grouped the head outline and head color into one group. Now that our character is finished, let's get animating. Before we start, take a quick look at Hollow Knight's idle animation. You'll notice the only changing parts of the animation are the cloak. Sure, the head and dagger move, but they don't change. This is why I'm such a big fan of this style. Team Cherry does a lot with a little when it comes to animation. For your character, focus on one or two things that will be moving. For my character, I'll be animating his jacket and hair. Okay, let's quickly set up our animation workspace. To do this, head to Window and select Timeline. You'll see a Timeline window pop up in the bottom of your screen. Click Create Frame Animation. Okay, finally, let's create a new group by clicking the New Group button in the bottom right. Let's name our new group to Frame 1 and drag everything except the background into Frame 1. Set your animation timeline to repeat forever and set the delay to 0.08 seconds. This will give you a frame rate close to Hollow Knight. Let's click the New Frame button in the bottom left. A new frame will appear. This is where you can see all the frames in your animation. Let's duplicate our frame 1 group in the layer panel and name it frame 2. In the timeline, let's make sure only frame 1 is visible on the first frame and the same for frame 2. Okay, now with all the setup done, we can actually start animating. If you followed everything up to this point, I think you'll find that this part is actually quite simple. Let's select the second frame in the timeline, head to the path panel, and select hair. If your path isn't lined up like mine, select the path and move it with the arrow keys. Now, all we're going to do is move the points in the path at the end of the hair slightly. Once that's done, head back to the layer panel and open your frame 2 hierarchy. Navigate to the hair outline layer and erase it all. Now, stroke the path of the new hair you made, making sure the hair outline layer is selected. Erase your hair color layer and fill in the newly created outline with the bucket tool. You might need to use the brush to fill in some corners. Now we'll repeat this process, except this time we'll do it for the jacket instead of the hair.
So you'll notice we now have two different frames. Let's repeat this two more times so we have a total of four unique frames. I'll speed this part up for you. I figured I'd leave it in just in case you want to pause or slow it down and take a longer look at what I'm doing. While this is playing, there's something I want to note. When you're doing a new frame and moving the points of your path, they only have to move very slightly. Also, be sure to add variation to how you're moving the points around. For instance, if the second frame, you move the bottom corner of the jacket right, in the third frame, move it left. We can add variation to our animation by duplicating the frames and changing the order for a total of 8 frames. You don't have to do this, but I find it's a quick way to add a bit more life to your animation. Click the new frame button 4 times. Let's duplicate our 4 frame groups in the layer hierarchy. The duplicated layers will be frames 5 through 8. Let's change around the order to whatever you like. Just make sure none of the same frames touch. For instance, don't have frame 1 next to frame 1 copy. Alright, we're all done animating our idle animation. Now all we have to do is export to Unity and we're done. First, go to File, Save As, and save a new copy of your Photoshop project as something else. I like to just add the word Sheet to the end like a sprite sheet. Now delete the background layer, create a new layer and add a little red dot where you want your pivot point to be. Head over to this timeline drop down menu and select flatten frames into layers. This will turn your frames into layers. Now delete everything except for the new flattened layers. This is why it's a good idea to save a new version of the project. Let's go to file, export, layers to files. Be sure to export directly into your Unity project somewhere in the asset folder. Here I'm exporting to a file called main character idle. Now click Run. Let's open up our Unity project, create an empty game object, and add an animator component. Let's create a new animation in the animation window. Set the samples to 12, and drag in each frame that you just exported. Hit play on your animation. Let's now head to our sprite editor and move the pivot of each sprite to the red circle we made. When you click on a time in the animation window, it will automatically select the sprite that is played at that time. So what I'm doing here is I'm clicking on the time in the animation window, then I click on the sprite editor window, I move the pivot and select apply. Now, all we have to do is re-export our project to get rid of that little red circle. To do this, head to the original Photoshop project and redo the export process, except this time, skip adding the extra red dot layer. Also, when you re-export, be sure to export in the same place with the same name so the sprites are overwritten. The pivot points you made will still be there inside Unity. When you head back into Unity, 
Your animation will be finished. That is it for this tutorial. If you made it this far, thank you for sticking with me. I hope you found this helpful. If you liked it, be sure to subscribe. I'll be posting more content like this in the future. Other than that, thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.